Thanks very much. That's the first time I've ever had a musical intro. I'm Alex. I'm the co-director of It's Nice That. My job today is you leave inspired, invigorated, an understanding of what the future of design might look like. <laughs> this is too good. Um, should we just bosh straight on in? I'm really interested, Grinner, from a historical context. Like, have you ever seen speed of digital turning to physical or, you know, a, a convergence happen like this at such pace before? The refrain that we so often hear is that the world is changing at a pace faster than we've ever known before. Clearly there is some truth in that, but I think it's also a fact that we're living that change, that we feel the speed. Arguably, the Industrial Revolution was a moment of as significant or greater change and speed of change that impacted a wider sector of society, and a wider sector of society had leverage on change. Where are the responsibility? We are all designers, we are making that world, but in whose service is it? Is it the individual? Is it society as a whole? Is it commerce? It, whose responsibility is it? Is it down to the designer to be responsible for what we're putting in the world, what we're asking? I think it's a conversation that needs to be... It should be it should be happening now. My friend and I were talking earlier about um, Dieter Ram's ten principles of design. Whether or not we need some sort of simple set of rules to kind of teach younger people about the digital world. Technology is running away from us. We kind of need to create some boundaries. Surely the most important thing we could be doing right now is finding a way to upskill a whole load of people to be able to contribute to this new world. That's this new dawn. The the next skill that any designer should learn is understand machine learning. And we need designers to be very aware of the data and the power of machine learning so that we can guide with intention where these systems are going. Uh, because if we don't, then commerce will tell us where it's going. And you don't want that to happen. From my point of view, from a publisher, digital is the most incredible enabler. If we print 10,000 magazines or we reach a million and a half people online, that's such a thrill, the fact that that thing exists and we can get to that many people without having to build factories and print more magazines. Like, I'm so excited by that idea of access. I think uh, the digital gives us flexibility in a very deep space. And what I mean by deep space is just like we have possibility to like make very, very deep layers of content, almost infinite. No. There's also uh, something very simple, which is less it's less polluting. And that is the dilemma that hasn't been resolved in the physical design, whether that's product design or whether that's architecture or you know, any type of uh, design that uses material. We kind of grew up, at least our generation, uh, touching things. You know? And so we still kind of remain a tactile animal, just like walking into a space like this or walking into the conservatory with all these plants. I mean, you know, you feel it here. <laughs> so I think that is one of the few advantages of physical and digital. I, I really, I also think a lot about content, right? I think about how we're consuming it and maybe there's this layer, maybe it's this hard hardware in our hand. And I really need that separation. I need it to be in this phone so I can also leave it and also I can get away from it and I can separate my own life. When that isn't there, how conscious are we gonna have to be about how we're acting? Currently, I'm completely unconscious how many times I'm on my phone. Like when that gets even more integrated, how do you think people are gonna cope with that? Society is still uncomfortable with this presence of the digital and computing when it's made physical. The new and the greatest luxury is a detox, a digital detox, a place away from the inevitability, the chase of social media. I actually think there is a convergence happening, which is why I think we need to be mindful as, as digital designers and as physical designers that we need to adapt to similar skills and we just need to both become really good at at making things that are good for humans. Because as all of these things start merging, what we wouldn't want is for you know, our visible space to be as polluted as the internet in 2004, right? Imagine pop-ups in reality, right? Like that would suck. Kids born into the digital age are using that technology. They're actually much more savvy than we are. I think as a species, we have a tendency to adapt and we will adapt to this. I, I am optimistic in a sense that that we are coming out of the infancy of digital. I do believe that we will actually have a much more mature approach to it and much more balanced. Like that's my, that's my projection of the future. But maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Thank you.